If you're learning piano on your own, you might be filled with questions. Are you doing it properly? Are you holding your hand in the right position? How do you polish a piece and get it ready to share with other people? In today's tutorial, you'll hear my top three tips gained from 30 years of teaching experience that will help you if you're studying piano on your own to tackle the things that make the biggest difference and fastest improvement towards your piano playing goals. It's difficult to learn anything on your own, but at the same time, it's not impossible. Today, we have YouTube and all sorts of technology that allows us to get started and up and running and even learn to play fairly proficiently. Although it's always preferred to have a piano teacher that'll guide you and troubleshoot you so you don't waste time, I'd like to share with you the three tips, the things that I find most critical in learning a piece and getting yourself in the right position to have the most success with it and not go about it the wrong way. So let's use as our study piece today the famous Bach minuet in G. Um, you know that it goes. And so on. And so this is a piece that typically many beginners play. Not to say it's easy, but this is a standard part of the repertoire for beginners. So let's now say you are ready to learn this beautiful piece of music. It is a great piece that teaches so many different skills. And so the first suggestion I have, the biggest tip for this piece or any piece of music is to figure out the first key issue. Now, before I get into that, let's talk about the three essential ingredients to make music. We need melody, we need harmony, and we need rhythm. And in this piece of music, we have uh, melodies going on in the right hand and in the left hand. We call this polyphonic music. The left hand is also supplying us with harmony. But the key thing to tackle first is rhythm. Rhythm is the most essential part of the learning process. If you get the rhythm right from the start, then you will set yourself up for success. It is a scaffolding. It is the structure that you insert your notes into. Many times people listen to YouTube and listen to a lot of examples of how other people play this piece and they sort of try to learn the rhythm by ear. That's not enough. To really, really understand rhythm, you have to be able to count it on your own and assign the counts to the various notes. So this is the way I would suggest doing this. And I would take out a pencil and look at your time signature. It is in three, four time. So in three, four time, we are going to count our quarter note is going to get one beat and we'll say for that one end if we have three quarter notes one and two and three and we know that eighth notes are equal to you need two of those to give you one quarter note so we'll call the first one one and the second one and okay so that is those are the fastest notes we have in this piece, and so we'll count everything, one and two and three and. So the next step is to assign your beats. And so to do that, you're going to look at the left hand and right hand. Let's take a look at that first measure. So we have a quarter note in the first beat in the right hand. That gets one and. The left hand has got a half note, so it's going to keep holding, but the two happens in the right hand here over the G, the and over the A. Here we have our three and. You must 
dispense with all three of your beads before you can proceed to the next one. So it takes a little bit of math. You have to be able to assign the beads accordingly. One in, two in, three in, and so on and so forth. Do that for the entire piece. Write in your counts. I suggest writing them the way I did in between the left hand and right hand part. And then the next step is to clap and count it. Okay, so take for instance the way that um, you've written out your counts, you've assigned your beats to the notes, then you count and clap. So it would look like this. One and two and three and 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 and so on and so forth. Get that rhythm into your body, get that rhythm into your whole being so that you can then really understand and have that great foundation because the next step is actually putting in the notes. So for the tip number two, what I suggest next, and this is a lot of preparation before you actually start playing. The next thing to prepare is your fingering. The fingering is essential to have a good fingering will get you through the piece. It's really the difference between playing it successfully or getting tripped up. So a smart, natural fingering is the key. Now, what is a natural fingering? Well, take into consideration the hand. We have stronger fingers and weaker fingers. The weakest finger is your fourth finger. The strongest finger is the thumb. Whenever you can use the thumb, the index finger, the third finger, one, two, three, those are your strong, strong fingers. And the four and five, five is also in a position of strength because it's at the end of your hand. And so the fourth finger is the weakest one. And so for instance, when you are assigning your fingering here, you wanna keep your hand in this regular five finger position. Anytime you have to cross your thumb under, um, it's going to be an extra step, but sometimes unavoidable. But if you can keep your hand in this natural position, you will be all set. So for instance, let's go through the right hand part and I'll show you a fingering that this edition has put in. This is um, a free edition that I got on virtual sheet music, but I will tell you, I'm going to change some of the fingering because some of it is not that natural. So let me show you. We start with five, one, two, three, four, five, one, one. Now here, they suggest five on E followed by a one on C. That fingering is not that comfortable for me because it puts my hand in this scrunched, tight, contracted position. So what I will do instead, I'm going to change this five to a three. And now I can just jump from my previous G to the third finger and be all set up. Okay, now I start four, five, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, three, two. Okay, so the rest seems pretty straightforward. Um, this edition has very good fingering, so there's only one spot here. Nope. No, I like it. I like it. Towards the end, I was thinking about, but it looks great. So most editions will give you a fairly straightforward and natural fingering. There are some that you might have to change and tweak to make it more comfortable for you. But once you have an understanding, a strategy for fingering, write it down. Again, the more you can mark up your music, the more you will be able to see like a roadmap what is happening and prepare. There's so many times that students bring music to me that they've been working on that doesn't have any marking on it and it drives me crazy because I think, you know, have you even touched this? Because it doesn't show any signs of where any signs of interaction any signs of like really working with it i really 
really strongly feel that a piece of sheet music should be kind of like your sketch pad. You should write notes for yourself in it. In addition to fingering, in addition to counting, um, you can write, you know, like prompts for yourself, like play boldly here, or it's more shy and intimate in this place. I use different colored pencils to indicate important passages. So the more you can actually write into your music to personalize it, to give yourself prompts and clues, the better it is in the long run. And that leads me to tip number three. Tip number three could be volumes written about this topic, but I'm just going to cut to the chase because this is a question I get asked a lot, um, which is hand and finger position. How should I hold my hand? Straight fingers, curved fingers, there are so many different schools of thought on this subject. How shall I sit high up and kind of push down? I've heard students say that they've been taught to like knead the keys like a like dough, um, which oftentimes leaves them very tense in the forearms. My tip is sit lower in order to make sure that you have a nice even position. So you see that my wrist is aligned with the top of my keys, my hand is rounded, my elbow is in line, my elbows are not tight to the side, but they are a little bit away from my torso. The fingertip must be rounded. You will have far more control. You will have far more feeling of security. You'll be able to get the dynamic that you want, control your tone, have evenness, and just a greater sense of stability at the piano with no tension. There's far more that could be said on this subject. And so I invite you to take a look at some of my tutorials from the Golden Tone Technique, which go very in depth about the setup and position and how to set yourself up for success. So now that you have given yourself the right rhythm, you understand the rhythm, the right kind of fingering, then you can proceed to learn. I advocate learning hands alone first with counting, with the right finger position, with the right fingering as well. Take your music, divide it into small bits. Even two measure sections is a great idea and don't go on until you can securely play one section. So when you start one and two and three and one and two and three and done. Be aware, did you do the phrasing, right? There is a certain kind of phrasing here. Um, also, your two Gs. Whenever you have two notes in a row in a melody, it's musical to not play them both the same way. Because if you do, it sounds very bangy and not well phrased, not musical. So it's a better idea to play one a little louder, one a little softer. You can really play it any way you want, but avoid playing it both the same way in a musical phrase, and you will set yourself up for a very musical and a very productive and a methodical way of learning the piece, stacking it level by level by level by level, brick by brick by brick, and that's how the house is built. So now I'd love to hear if you are a student um, that is learning piano without a teacher on your own, let me know the number one thing that you struggle with. I'd love to hear, is it something about the way to practice? Is it motivation to keep on going without a teacher? Uh, what is it? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if this, um, any of these tips you found particularly helpful. And if there are any further questions, I'd be happy to go into more depth. So feel free to contact me. And um, 
just let me know how you're doing with all these things. I have a lot of free trainings and events coming up. We're doing a play along where we all are learning a piece of music together each month. On the month of May, we are doing Satie's Gymnopédie number one, which is a beginner-friendly piece. I have a version also that's a simplified version if you're a, a very new beginner to piano, but it's an absolutely beautiful piece, and it's easy to learn when we're in a community, propping each other up, having coaching, and knowing what to do every week. I break it down so you have your little assignment for the week you get it done and little by little we put it together and by the end of the month you'll have a new piece of music to play new skills new community new friends so i'd love for you to join for our play along the details are below thanks so much for watching and i'll see you again at the next practice tip